This is Huawei's new mid-range phone, the Nova 10 Pro. So the Nova 10 Pro is really selfie orientated. For those of you who like to shoot a lot of vlog footage, you do like to take a lot of selfies because we have a wide 100 degree field of view, 60 megapixel front facing camera with a two times optical zoom, eight megapixel camera. The screen is an OLED 120 Hertz, 6.78 inches, and it's all powered by the Snapdragon 778G 4G version. It has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery and even very fast charging at 100 watts. The rear main camera is a 50 megapixel sensor. It's the RYYB setup too, with that one with the pixels, and it does have an accompanying 8 megapixel ultra wide and 2 megapixel camera for depth information for portrait shots. Now included with the Nova 10 Pro, you will find our SIM tray tool, a type A to type C cable, a TPU case, clear one, it even covers over the buttons, which is good. And then our charger. Now it is a large charger, but it's very powerful. This is Huawei's supercharge, 100 watts. So very quick, it charges the phone in just over 35 minutes. First thing you notice about this phone is the camera module. It really does stand out. It's got quite a bit of bling to it, the gold around the edges of it and everything there. So the main camera is 50 megapixels, f1.8 aperture and eight megapixel ultra wide, which is f2.2. It is the weaker camera and a two megapixel, which is just used for depth for portrait shots. And we've got an LED flash. Now this material here on the back here is a frosted glass. It's really good because it doesn't actually pick up any fingerprints whatsoever. We've got the unique Nova branding there that you can see and our buttons on the side, these are made out of metal, but the frame around the outside is plastic. Now you can tell because when you look just inside where the type C port is, you'll see that there is plastic in there. And if it was metal, you'd see antenna lines that you normally do, but it feels really good. So we have two speakers, the downwards fire speaker right here, our microphone, our SIM tray takes two nano SIMs, and then right up the top we have the second loudspeaker through the earpiece little port there, and a secondary microphone. There is no IR blaster with this particular model. The Nova 10 Pro has a 6.78 inch screen. It's OLED, it's curved, 120 hertz, HDR10 support. And I'll get onto the screen in a little more detail shortly. So the thickness of the phone, it is 7.9 millimeters. However, the camera does protrude out almost four millimeters, as you can see on the side here. The weight of it being 191 grams isn't bad, so it doesn't feel like it's too heavy. And you'll see that with our in-screen fingerprint reader, it's very low, the position. I wish it was about here. You do get used to it, but you have to hold the phone up quite high in order to scan with your thumb, which I think most people will be doing. It is quick, this optical fingerprint read. I've had no problems with it. It seems to be very accurate. It's one thing that Huawei does really well are their fingerprint readers. Normally, in my experience, they are excellent. The bottom bezel is very small and the top bezel, and because of the curvature of the screen, it does make the left and right bezels look very slim there. So this 120 hertz OLED screen can display up to a billion colors, HDR10 support, and I've measured the maximum brightness to be almost 900 nits. So it's a very bright screen. You can make it out in direct sunlight. Colors do look indeed good on the screen. Now I have noticed that if you're gonna lie it down on a table without the case like I have here, that it does tend to rock around a little bit there. So you probably wanna be using that case for it. So the screen overall is very nice to look at. It is curved, however, so you see that right now there's a bit of a blue tint here from the OLED. And if you look at it on an angle like this, you see that it's a little bit brighter. There are some pros and cons to that, of course, that when you're holding it, it feels nicer in hand. And for the gestures to swipe those, swiping on the corners does feel very good because it is curved. However, I prefer, I don't know about you, flat displays. Now you get all your typical settings in here too as well with this screen. So you've got all your white balance color temperature you can set. You can even have the resolution to scale and that refresh rate. Now I've forced it onto high for this review and the whole time I've been testing it because I feel that if you've got 120 Hertz, you probably want it always on 120 Hertz. So what is missing here is a 90 Hertz option, which would be good. Now is there DC dimming? Under more display settings, I don't see anything about their DC dimming, unfortunately, but I'm not seeing any flicker coming through with the screen. You see there's no banding happening on camera. And when I look at it at angles, when I first turn it on, which you sometimes see a bit of flicker on some 
OLED or AMOLED screens, it's not happening with this particular panel. The Nova 10 Pro is running EMUI. Now it is version 12 that we do have. And you'll see here that I've got eight gigabytes of RAM and it is of course the Snapdragon 778G that is powering this. And it's got the 4G modem only. So not the 5G version. We don't get 5G unfortunately with Huawei here with this. So I have 256 gigabytes of storage and everything's pretty fast on this, very fast indeed. So there's no problems I've found with launch times, I don't see any noticeable lag when you swipe down for your toggles, your gestures, all of that is really, really quick. Now you will notice here that we've got a few little options. You've got Huawei Super Device. I've mentioned this in many of my other videos and in some of their other tech. And if you do happen to have, say, a Huawei tablet like their MatePad Pro 11, or you have, for example, one of their laptops, one of their MateBooks, you can seamlessly move your files between them. And you can even share the screen of this phone on your actual laptop, which is a very handy to have. So performance optimization, really good here with this Nova 10 Pro. When you first power on the Nova 10 Pro, you will be greeted with this. So there are a few bloatware applications here. Now they're not all installed. It's like placeholders, these folders. So under social, you'll find like TikTok and a few other things. So if you don't click them, they won't install. If you do, it'll take you over to App Gallery. By the way, App Gallery, this is it right here, is their app store. So all the applications that you use, most of them are all in here. And I keep mentioning this in my videos that every time I test it out, it just keeps getting better and better. So for example, if I wanted uh, WhatsApp, okay, is it actually going to be in there? Well, I do know the answer to that, that it's going to come up and tell me that Okay, it's not there. There's a few other things. You've got WhatsApp business, but it will give me the result here. It would actually, using Pedal Search, find the APK file, the installation file for it. So I can click on this, touch that, and it will take me over to the official website. You can download the app. Now, for most apps, you can find the APKs for them. A lot of them now don't require anything from the Google Framework, Google Play Store Framework, so they'll run just fine by themselves. It's only just a few games that I have found that haven't run, or for example, like Antutu, but you can run Antutu Lite. So, free space with the 256 gigabyte model, you have approximately 236 gigabytes free, and you'll see the internal storage speeds, they are excellent, very good, really fast there, so UFS 3.1. Uh, random reads, I have seen faster, the sequentials are very good, and overall, this is not, of course, going to be slowing down this particular mid-range phone at all. So here is our Antutu score. Now, this version I got here is Antutu Lite, so the scores are a little lower, a little different here, but they are still very good for the chipset. So the 778G from Qualcomm, the Snapdragon chip, is reasonably fast, getting almost... 500,000 points. So it's got good performance, GPU is good. It's not, of course, at the level of their Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, but for the price point, it's not a bad chip at all, I find, for general use. So we do have a wide vine security level 1 here, but there is a catch. So far, Netflix seems to be in standard definition. They're not acknowledging this DRM cert that we do have for streaming. And Amazon Prime Video is in standard definition as well, which is one of the cons here of this phone. Hopefully that can be corrected. We do have camera two API support is full. It's not quite level three, which is the maximum, but full is still enough, I believe, to use pretty much all of the features if you look for any Gcam ports to run on this out of the cameras, if you want just a different style with your photos. So charging speeds on it are very quick. If you plug it in and charge, you've got the option. It will tell you if you want to actually charge it even quicker. You hold down and you get the max 100 watts. You can even pull down the top menu and select it to then use the 100 watt charging. It's very quick. It takes around about 35, just over 35 minutes to fully charge, which is not bad at all for a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. It's really quick. And it can go from 20% to 80% in just 10 minutes, which is really quick, again, using the 100 watt charging mode. So there it wasn't actually charged, well, sorry, wasn't timed correctly here, which I use and 224. It took 27 minutes to go to 43 to 100, uh, but it's only about 10 minutes to go to 20 to 80. So it really depends on where the battery is. And of course, it's got sensors and everything to tick that it's not going to be overheating and it's going to be safe to charge at the 100 watts. So almost nine hours of runtime here for my fixed battery life test. This is not real world, but it is a fixed test. So you can compare it against all of the other phones that I do review because it's the same test looped. 
the same 200 nits of brightness, and this is not a bad score at all for 120 hertz. So realistically, you are looking around about seven and a half hours, seven hours, seven and a half tops of real world screen on time use out of this battery. So we don't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You can use one of those adapters and the quality sounds pretty good. Now these loudspeakers have a little bit of bass to them. And of course it's coming out the top here and the bottom. And I'll play the sample track now at 100% just to give you an idea what they sound like. They're quite good. In our gaming performance, so with PUBG, you can select the extreme frame rate, but you have to select smooth for the graphics option. If you put it on to balance or anything over that, you only get the ultra frame rate option. As expected for the Snapdragon 778G that the performance is good. I don't see any lags here with that ultra frame rate option, really smooth. And what I do like is the speakers here because they're quite loud, very loud in fact. They do add to the immersion. Although I've got the volume turned down a little bit here, so you can easily get kills. You're not going to get any lag in a game like PUBG. So all the titles out there that you will test out will run just fine on this chipset. As for thermals, well, it looks like we're not going to have any problems. It's not a very hot chipset. It's very similar to, say, the Snapdragon 865 or the 870. It is getting a little hot around this area right here, but not bad. And moving over to the video. So with the two front-facing cameras, we've got the 8 megapixel 2 times optical. And then the 60 megapixel camera, now it's quite a wide field of view, it's 100 degrees. So right now it is 0 0.8, but if I then just set it back to the ultra wide setting, which is even wider of course, you can see there we have the 100 degree field of view for a front facing camera, it's really good. And this is 4K 30 only, so we cannot shoot 4K 60 sadly, and I have noticed that some of the footage does look quite juddery, especially when I pan around, that it seems to be dropping frames here. I can even zoom in, and that is now over to the two times. Hang on, I'll get to the two times. There we go. You'll see it change over. That is the two times camera, which has, well, a bit too much zoom for me when it comes to selfie video. But let's take a look at the rear video now. So with our video here, we can shoot 4K 30 frames per second. This is the ultra wide, which tends to have a lot of judder in it. It doesn't really look that good at all. So I'll just zoom in now, and we'll go from the ultra wide to then the main 50 megapixel camera. There we go which is looking a little better, but I'm still seeing what looks like dropped frames and some clear juddering, especially when I do pan around now. So I have digital zoom. I just zoom into the mountain range here, that's two times. And again, it looks like it's still dropping frames. So I hope a firmware update can correct this. So the pros of the Nova 10 are that it has an excellent screen, 120 hertz, very fast, very fluid UI, don't see any lags or stutters. The screen, 120 hertz, means that the battery life isn't going to be as great as running at 60 hertz, but it's still decent. You can still get over seven hours of screen on time with this particular model here. And then of course we've got the 100 watt fast charging, which is great. The build of it is really solid. The camera module does protrude a little more than some of the others out there, but we do have a good set of cameras. Well, at least the main rear camera is very good, and the front-facing camera is above average of what you typically get with a lot of mid-range phones. It's 60 megapixels, and then it has a 100-degree field of view, which is great for just getting so much more into the shot and great for those group selfie photos. It even has then the two times eight megapixel 
zoom camera, which uh, is okay quality. You can get portrait shots with it that just you know, look a little bit better, a little bit different than what you get with other phones again. However, the video quality for vlog with the 4K is just limited to 4K 30. I hope with a firmware update they can add 4K 60. The loudspeakers, they are really good. They're loud, they've got a bit of bass to them, and they sound great. Now, pricing of this, I think it's a little expensive here considering it is a mid-range spec, right? Snapdragon 778G, but it's priced leaning towards more flagship price point, I feel, so I hope that Huawei can work on the pricing. I have also noticed a couple of things with it. Well, one of them is the ultra-wide camera is not that great, especially at video, it looks washed out, not good at all. And the other is a problem that has somehow come back into this particular Huawei phone, something that Demir Frank, the nitpicker, has talked about, well, many years ago when he had his English videos, and that is the manual brightness is fluctuating, it's dimming when it shouldn't really happen, because normally when you set your manual brightness on the phone, that's where it should always stay. But I've noticed when you go into the app gallery, it will dim down. You go into some other applications, it will then be brighter, like in settings. So I hope that they can fix that and make the brightness setting global, no matter what application you are running there. And that is really it when it comes to some of the little cons with it. It is a very good release, a solid release here. The main one for me is that pricing. I just hope that Huawei can to work on that, bring it down a little bit at its current release price. So thanks a lot for watching my thoughts and opinions and the review here of the Nova 10 Pro from Huawei.